All candidates participating in the forum were asked the same questions and were given the same amount of time to respond. This video was filmed by QAC TV and the questions were selected by editor Angela Price from Reader Suggestions. I'm Nicole Romeo reporting for the Bay Times and Record Observer. I'm here with Suzanne Hogan, who is a Democratic Commission candidate at large. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Nicole. In two minutes or less, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want to be a county commissioner. So, well, um, it's a pleasure to be here. and. I am Suzanne Hogan and I'm running for the at-large county commissioner seat. Uh, I'm running because I believe I have the right qualifications to lead the county forward in pursuing new economic opportunities while preserving our rural heritage. Uh, I grew up here on the shore uh, and it means a lot to me that this community still has a lot of what defines eastern shore living. We have small towns, we have a working agricultural landscape, we have a connection to the bay uh, and a connection to each other. It's been a wonderful place to raise my kids. And I get a kick out of hearing them talk about coming back here to build their own lives. But I really worry that without thoughtful and innovative leadership, much of what they treasure about the county will be gone before they come back, uh, which is really why I'm running for the at-large county commissioner seat, to keep this county a place where people can afford and want to live, work, and play. I've already spent the last 14 years working to improve the lives of children and families in this county. I was project director of a federal grant in our schools to reduce underage drinking, and I was uh, media coordinator of the Be the Wall Between Teens and Alcohol campaign, which ran in three counties. I've, I'm a former fellow with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and I've been fortunate enough to be the chair, vice president, or president of, of five local nonprofit groups. Um, along the way, I've worked with outstanding leadership from the state's attorney's office, the Maryland State Police, our health department, sheriff's department, Department of Juvenile Services, our schools, as well as passionate and committed volunteers who are d dedicated to improving local lives. Um, in 2012, when our current commissioners got a control on growth, I worked with parents and uh, other citizens to keep growth on pace with our schools. Uh, I chaired the Committee to Protect QAC Great Schools, which won 60% of the vote in 2012, demonstrating that uh, citizens value uh, managed growth approach as well as our schools. Thank you. In two minutes or less, explain what you believe are the biggest issues facing the county. Well, I have, I have three priorities. Um, my first priority is economic growth. Um, I, we can do a better job than to have 80% of our citizens traveling out of the county for work. Um, but anyone who's been involved or in the county for any period of time knows how contentious some of our recent growth fights have been. We need to do a better job of bringing the right people to the table to sh create a shared vision for what economic growth in this county looks like and then begin to work with each other as opposed to against each other to realize that economic growth. Um, my second priority is fiscal responsibility. We've been racking up these millions of dollars in end of the year surpluses. Uh, money that's just disappearing off the table with minimal transparency on what it's going to end up getting spent on. Um, I'm confident we can do a better job in how we forecast revenues um, and expenditures so we can better budget to deliver our vital services and really look at whether we can afford a tax cut. Uh, I think maybe, I mean, I think it's an important conversation to have given the surpluses we've been running. My third priority is our schools. We have an outstanding school system. Even our Economic Development Commission realizes they're the second strongest asset this county has as a driver for economic growth. We have got to protect them. Um, yes, there is a large taxpayer burden attached to our schools, but it's because we're a wealthy county. We don't get as much money as other uh, less um, economically advantaged counties because we, we are one of the wealthiest counties in the state. But we get a significant return on investment for what we put into our schools, and we need to do a better job of giving them the resources they need to retain our outstanding teachers and deliver first-rate quality education for our kids. Thank you. In one minute or less, what is your position on the proposed Four Seasons development? Um, I think Four Seasons, is a cur as it's currently proposed, is just way too big a proposition. Uh, we have we already have significant traffic issues uh, on Ken Island um, and along Route 18, and um, the way it's the the size of it right now, it's just it's just way too big. I mean, we really need to go back and look at ways to um, reduce its impact on on our local roads, reduce its impact on public safety, um, and then see you know if, if at a smaller scale um, if it's something that could be viable. Thank you. In one minute or less, what is your position on the public sewer for Southern Kent Island? 
Um, I still don't believe that we have a viable economic um, or financial model for the Route 8 sewer. Um, this has been my position all along on the Route 8 sewer, um, that, that, that there's just not the financial assumptions that are currently there. Um, I, I just don't think that they're strong enough, I don't think they're accurate enough, and I don't think they currently reflect how much of a burden is going to be on current residents. Um, you know, House Bill 11 passed recently, and I, I think that we need to go back to the drawing board and look at the new financial model with House Bill 11, um, whether or not we need to bring along all of the nine communities, or maybe we can just focus on a financial plan for going to Ken Island States and Roman Coco on the Bay, um, as opposed to bringing along all the other communities with all the infill growth. So I'm, I'm gonna be um, putting forth um, uh, some suggestions on asking the commissioners to really look at some new modeling. Thank you. In one minute or less, what is your position on a public pool for the county and the YMCA project? Well, I, I shared at the last commissioner meeting that I grew up in Talbot County. Um, the, height, the YMCA was directly across the square street from the middle school. It was a critical part of my life growing up, both in middle school and in high school, because I participated in programs there all the time, every week. A Y is a critical component of positive youth development, and we just don't have enough things for our kids to do that contribute to you know, positive outcomes. So I think it's a fine use of our local resources to be to have a Y here, um, and if it could if it could additionally have a pool component, again that that would be absolutely great. Um, I think our, we need to have a public pool. Um, swimming is a great. Uh, exercise and it's a competitive opportunity with scholarships attached for kids so uh, you know we, we need to be using our resources towards that end as well. Thank you. In one minute or less what is your position on the new parking permit required to access public beaches at county parks commonly being called the beach permit? <laughs> I, uh, I, it, it, uh, I think the commissioners could have done a far better job of how they went about um, deciding to um, create a user fee around something that taxpayers are already paying for. Um, if the issue is trash, then we really should have been looking for solutions specific to, to trash and trash removal. Um, if the issue was public safety, we really should have been looking at specific public safety measures. Um, but going right to a, a permitting fee um, without any consideration for um, uh, local residency um, uh, considerations. Um, I think it was just really, really poor governance. Um, you know, I spent 30 minutes looking around at uh, other communities when this issue first came up, and I found several communities that found ways to to have a you know uh, reduce prices for locals. I don't I don't agree that we need a user fee at all, but if we're going to do one, we can certainly come up with a way to do it uh, with with residency considerations. Thank you. In one minute or less, please describe your plan for achieving the county's stated goals of controlling growth while promoting economic development. Um, th this is one of the fundamental pieces of my, um, my platform for the county. Um, and I think that there are two ways that we can look at, at growth, economic growth. Um, there's, a, there's massive opportunities in the area of growing our local food economy. There is a lot of money on the table um, from, the pri from the private sector as well as the public sector to grow um, uh, local, sustainably produced um, agricultural products and deliver them to markets such as um, the D.C., Baltimore metro area, as well as potentially um, the beach communities during the summer. Um, I think we need to be really pursuing um, the, the food hub model in this county. I know that there are other counties who are looking very closely at, at food hubs, um, and I think we need to get there first or be involved in the regional approach to, to locking in those opportunities. Uh, I think that also um, uh, high technology jobs that depend on broadband are also an important um, opportunity for us moving forward. Thank you. Finally, in one minute or less, would you like to revisit any of these issues we discussed or add anything we missed talking about? Sure. Well, with my, my, with my family's blessing and support, I'm ready to put my experience to work for the county. Um, I will vote to manage growth. Uh, I will stand for fiscal accountability. Um, I will fight to protect our schools. Uh, and I will work to create long-term sustainable 
um, job opportunities in the county by bringing the right people to the table. Um, but accomplishing all of that, the first thing I've got to do is win. So I'm asking viewers for their vote. Um, vote for me, Suzanne Hogan, for the at-large county commissioner um, candidate on November 4th, 2014. Um, if any viewers want more information or want to connect with me, you can find me online at www.suzannehogan2014.com, um, and there you'll find links to my Facebook and my Twitter, um, as well as other ways to connect with me. So thank you for the opportunity, and, and God bless everyone. Thank you, and thank you for participating in our forum. Thank you. To watch other candidates who have appeared in this series, please go to either the QAC TV YouTube channel or visit myeasternshoremd.com. Thank you for watching.